Hello YouTube friends. It's the middle of the night here and we're having a thunderstorm. I had planned to do this video anyway and I even wrote some notes up last night. But then I didn't get it done and since we're having a thunderstorm I'm going to go ahead and do it tonight. But thank you for joining me. I uh, realized that even though I've been doing these videos for about two months, well one month this time, I started in November, kind of near the end of November 2020, and did maybe four or five, and then I went out of town and didn't get another one done until I moved in January, so I've only been doing this last set for about 30, 40 days. And, but a, a friend was texting me over the last week saying she was starving on this diet. I thought, I wonder why she's starving. I'm never hungry on the carnivore diet, which is a version of low carb, high fat. Then when we were doing a little bit of back and forth email or texting, I guess that's the modern word for it. She sent me some of her, this meal plan and app was sitting here and it was nowhere near enough food. And I thought, well, I have not explained the basics of this type of lifestyle well enough. So today we're going back to the basics. So if you'll take a moment and uh, put a comment down below as to what type of low carb, high fat diet you wish you were doing or are trying to do. The options are really just basic low carb, high fat, uh, keto, ketovore, which is kind of a name uh, Dr. Barry and his wife and some of her friends made up. That's somewhere between keto and carnivore and carnivore, which is all meat. So let me break those down a little better. Low carb, high fat means you're eating less than approximately 120 grams of carbs per day. Keto is about maybe 50 grams of carbs with some low carb, uh, non-starchy vegetables. Uh, ketovore is something between keto and carnivore, which I'll describe in just a second. So let's say maybe 40 grams of carbs a day, which tending towards mostly animal products. And then carnivore is generally only animal products. So tell me down below real quick uh, to help the uh, YouTube algorithm, what type of uh, diet you watch this video to find out about. And boy, the time is ticking by. I promise you if this goes over 20 minutes, I'm going to split it into two parts. I have learned how to do that. <laughs> I'm not real good at the editing stuff and I don't know how to splice or any of that, but I, I, I do know how to split it now and can do two or three parts if it goes too long. But I'm just going to talk because I feel very badly that people have watched me for a month, but yet they aren't able to succeed based on the information I've given them. And number one, I'm probably not going to be able to give you enough information for you to fully do this way of living or way of eating properly. You're going to have to take some time and watch some other people that are more advanced and have more of a scientific background than I do. So let's go into that for a second. I do have a bachelor's of science. So I know biology, I know chemistry, I know physics, and I know, um, even took a class, I think it was called, anyway, it was something about bugs, uh, identifying bugs, because my, my degree is actually a bachelor's of science in forestry with a specialization in park management, well, forest recreation and park management. I was a chief park ranger for three and a half years getting out of college. Then I was a police officer. Then I've been self-employed for, well, that, that's a bit of a jump there. I was a police officer. Then I was a missionary in the Czech Republic. That, that does kind of eat along this diet over there. They're very meat-based in that country. And I got rather slim, and my mother fattened me up as soon as I got back. I was over there about 13 months out of a three-year period. Then I came back to Texas to go to seminary. I ran a photography company right after that, or right during that, I should say. I didn't stay in seminary very long. And then I started my own photography company, which was very successful in the political event photography niche. I do still kind of run that, but with the woo-foo bat flu, there haven't been any events to photograph in the last 15 months, 
14, 12, however long it's been. And currently I work for another government agency in the law enforcement field as a civilian. And that's really about all I'm allowed to say about that. Uh, especially if I'm going to criticize the government's uh, dietary guidelines. But uh, five years ago, I had a very, or a little over five years ago, I had a very serious health incident. And ever since then, I have been researching lots of uh, YouTube doctors. And I'm going to encourage you to watch some of those. The best channel I have found is one called Low Carb Down Under. And if you want a, a good meal plan, uh, search on YouTube for Paul Mabry Hamburger recipe. He does a hamburger, egg, and cheese casserole and eats it almost every day. That's my becoming my primary care physician. So uh, Dr. Barry, who's out of Tennessee, I watch a lot of his YouTube also, and I took these notes from his video last time. I'm trying to run over them very quickly. Excuse me, so this doesn't go terribly long. I just ate some fried cheese when I got home. Hopefully you won't hear the thunder in this, and I'll be able to go to sleep by the time it finishes. But Okay, first of all, you want to do low-carb of any variety. You get to choose how many vegetables you want, and you get to choose how many carbs you eat. But in order to be truly low-carb, you should be somewhere between zero carbs and 130. Now, if you're just starting, you're not going to go to zero carbs. Some days I'm at 10, some days I'm at 30, some days, like today, Christina sneaks me a cookie. <laughs> so, I didn't actually put that on my list, but I, uh, I did enjoy it. So, um, you want to try it for a minimum of 30 days. Just set your mind that you're going to do it for 30 days, because... If you've been on a high-carb diet for 20, 30, 50 years or more, your gut bacteria is not going to be adjusted to the proper human diet, which is mainly meat, animal products. Uh, that it, Meat includes everything from shellfish, seafood, any kind of animal that grows on the land. You can eat guinea pig if you want, like they do in South America. I don't, or at least not now. If I lived down there, I might. And I know we had uh, like cow stomach soup in, uh, in the Czech Republic. I think they call it tripe. But anyway, your body needs some time to get adjusted to that way of eating. Right now, all your bacteria just love sugar, just like you do. But if you get this right, you will not crave sugar, you will not be hungry between meals, and you won't have to snack. Or if you do snack, you'll, you'll know some uh, carnivore, keto-friendly snacks to have, because I'll try to get over that also. But first of all, give it at least 30 days, preferably 90 days, because you will go through a period about 10, 20 days in where your body is trying to adjust. And some people call this phase the keto flu or the Atkins flu, because Dr. Atkins was the first uh, doctor to to realize this and if he hadn't slipped on the ice and hit his head and died from that he would have probably had a bigger impact. He didn't die from his diet, he didn't die from natural, well, natural causes, he weather related, but it wasn't because he was eating all meat even though the medical field at that time was horribly bad to him and some of them still are. A lot of this is not mainstream medical but that's why I went in that. I have a little bit of a science background, not that it matters because I want you to watch People like Dr. Sarah Halberg, who's the medical director for the VERTA program, which I got blue on tonight, that's VERTA, but Nationwide has been my insurance company pretty much ever since I've been driving. I'm not paid by them, it's not a promotion, but they've always been good to me. But uh, I want you to get the science of this, and then you can watch people, watch the VERTA Health Channel, V-I-R-T-A. I was in with my other PCP here at, at JPS Hospital, I was telling him I was on the VERTA program. He's like, is that V-E-R-D-A? I'm like, no, it's V-I-R-T-A. So hopefully he's going to look that up. He is not as against the carnivore program as he was when I was 70 pounds overweight. Now that I'm only 30 pounds overweight, he's a little more agreeable to my way of thinking. But he's still an MD, and he still has to follow the food guidelines in his recommendations. But let's get into this. We're 10 minutes in. That's cutting my time. 
but do it for at least 90, 30 days, preferably 90, before you, you make a decision, before you throw it in and say, I'm not going to do it. But number, the number one rule is every time you eat, eat until you are comfortably stuffed. Not like Thanksgiving stuffed, more like an all-you-can-eat buffet stuffed. stuffed. But you want to eat the right things, too. You want to eat fatty meats and add a little fat to your, your meal every day. If you're eating vegetable, add butter to them, or sour cream, or cream cheese. All of those are good fats to add, or olive oil. But uh, some of the things that people get confused on there is no portion control in low carb. There is no calorie counting, and you want to push your stuffed limit. Trust me, you can eat as much as you want and still lose weight as long as you're eating the right foods. I am actually down 40 pounds over the last two weeks. You can watch some of my previous videos to see some of the details or hear some of the details. Okay, so I know that's difficult. We are so used to being told to eat low fat, light, uh, what are some of the other terms that I use? Low cal, um, non-fat, skim milk, Throw all that away. Just throw it away. Forget everything you've ever heard about what you should eat unless you are your ideal weight. If you're your ideal weight, keep doing what you're doing. But I think you're watching this because you're not your ideal weight. So forget everything the food guidelines say. Forget everything the medical field has told you. They all base it on the food guidelines, which are totally wrong. So listen here quickly because I'm telling you what other doctors say. I'm just kind of repeating it. Eat until you're comfortably full. Do not count calories. Eat as much as you need to to feel full at that meal. If a 8-ounce ribeye doesn't do it, get a 12-ounce. If a 12-ounce doesn't do it, get 16 ounces. And eat it until you don't want any more. That will tide you over to the next time you're hungry. And you really should only eat when you are truly hungry. Okay, that can be any time from one to three times a day. But you won't need snacks if you do it this way okay and you want to focus on fatty meat okay forget about the cut the skin off the chicken forget about cut the skin off the fish that's where the fat is stored eat that stuff in fact forget about uh, white meat chicken go to the dark meat it has more fat in it forget about turkey as being healthy for you forget about everything that you've heard is healthy for you if you eat oranges, you're going to get fat. If you eat apples, you're going to get fat. It's all sugar. And the whole point of this diet is to get your sugar. I shouldn't say diet. It's a way of eating and a way of living. And once you get your sugar low enough, then you can actually lose fat. So the fat doesn't have a sugar. Res when you eat fat, it doesn't have a sugar response. So you can burn the stored sugar you have around your belly, around your butt, and everywhere else you don't want it. And then, then you can actually start burning. Well, you burn what's in the blood first, and then you can burn away what's stored where you don't want it. And you don't have to ex exercise with this program. Exercise has benefits for health. It does not have a whole lot of benefits in initial weight loss. Maybe some in maintenance weight loss, but not in losing weight. I've been a member of 24-Hour Fitness for ever since I started my my own photography company which was in 2003 so what's that 18 years and I can I can't go to the same gym anymore because they went bankrupt and they closed the one that was closest to me but I, I and I just generally went and sat in the hot tub especially I was ballooning out like the Michelin man but uh, when I did work out when I'd go upstairs to everybody it was I could see people that had been going to that same gym and almost killing themselves exercising and they were heavier than they were before, but it's not their fault, it's not your fault, because you're eating the wrong thing and you haven't even thought about it like that. But 13, 15 years, I think I'd try something new and that's what I did. It almost killed me before I did it, but let's hope you're smarter than I am and you just listen to me and go ahead and change your ways before it's too late. Why I said I give it at least 30 days is because I want you to transition slow. Well, I don't want you to. I want you to listen and then do what you want to do. I'm not trying to tell you what to do. I don't want to be the, I want you to, I told you this. No, just all I am is a mouthpiece. I'm taking the research I found and sharing it. 
So, of course, I want you to in the sense that I want you to get the results I'm getting. And generally, to get the results I'm getting, you probably have to do what I've been doing. So I want you to transition slowly. Take one to three weeks or longer to slowly transition over to the lower carb. That will help your body adjust more and it will also help try to avoid what they call the keto flu, which isn't a flu at all. It basically means you're low on salt and magnesium and that's easy to fix. You drink two cups of bouillon every day and it pretty much keeps you from getting the, boy, the keto flu. Okay, and then that one to three weeks or longer gives your organs time to adjust and get the bacteria to grow back to digest the meat. Okay, and a big tip here is to actually throw out all your vegetable oils, seed oils, or what they really are, but they call them vegetable oils, and get some animal fats and cook in the animal fats. The easiest one is butter or lard or bacon grease. Bacon grease and lard are basically the same thing except the lard comes from the skin of the pig and the bacon grease comes from the fat belly that you probably cooked in your in your own kitchen but you may not be able to uh, clarify it as much as the lard. Okay and then tallow is uh, beef fat. Originally when McDonald's came out they fried all their french fries in tallow and they from what I hear they were much much better than they are today. Maybe you like McDonald's french fries. Sorry that's not on this diet. Potatoes are high starch so they turn into sugar very quickly. So for that 30 to 90 day trial you want to cut it. This is what you want to cut out. You want to cut out all the seed oils, i.e. vegetable oils, i.e. basically any oil you can buy at the grocery store except for coconut oil. That is a plant product and it is a very good oil to cook in. You can also use olive oil if you're not heating it up. Uh, you might find lard at the grocery store. It'll probably be in a block and be homogenized, but if you have, like I do have these Mexican supermarkets in the area, they make lard and that's where I buy it from. It's not solid, it's not in a box, it, it's not at some manufacturing plant. The people at the store actually make it, I believe. It's called rendered pig fat, or pig skin fat. But if you switch over to those, you will do yourself an enormous amount of good. The other two things you really want to minimize, almost eliminate, is any kind of wheat product, any kind of starchy uh, vegetable, and there's more starchy ones than you think. Oh, I don't have the list right here, but tomatoes, strawberries, bananas are absolutely horrendous. Uh, any kind of potato, and then in the wheat, any kind of pasta, any kind of bread. You, you might say, well, I could keep that under my calories or my grams of carbs for the day. And maybe you can, but you're going to get enough grams of carbs other ways that you don't want that all turning into sugar and boosting your insulin. Okay, and the other thing is just regular refined sugar, or really all sugar. You don't want to use honey, you don't want to use sugar. You probably don't even want to use artificial sweeteners, but you can if you use the right ones. And uh, so you can have tea, you can have coffee, you can put a little bit of sweetener in it. I use mainly saccharin and I started drinking Diet Mountain Dew which has aspartame in it which can sometimes give you a headache. It can probably cause cancer too, both of them, but uh, at the moment I'm more concerned about what the, what the vegetable oils and the sugar and the wheat are doing to me than what the artificial sweetener will do to me. So I will probably wean off of that at some point in time, but I kind of had to have something like a soda to to make the transition. But when you're doing that one to three week slow transition, try to get all those products out of your house. Try to get uh, vegetable oils, try to get uh, cereals, breads, biscuit mix, uh, syrup, maple syrup. You're not able to eat the pancakes or the, the waffles, so what do you need the syrup for anymore? 
and sugar. I mean, you don't have to throw it away, but make sure it's not easily attainable. So if you do get a craving, I'll tell you how to address it without a sweet thing. Okay, and another point, I've mentioned it kind of already, is you need to use plenty of salt. Salt to taste, and then salt a little more. Because as you drop your insulin, your body's going to burn off glycogen, which is what glucose, i.e. sugar, gets turned into, and then stored as fat. So as you burn off that glycogen, it's about three parts water to one part sugar, and you're going to urinate a lot. When you urinate a lot, a lot of your minerals and sodium get flushed down the drain. So you need to make sure you are adding lots of sodium back. Uh, one trick, you know, Dr. Finney stated was to carry bouillon cubes with you. And uh, Verda recommends you do one in the morning and one in the evening. Uh, mix it in hot water, or I guess you can mix it in vents and have it cold if you like. I prefer it hot. I also prefer the beef flavor, but I also have a lot of chicken flavor. They also make a vegetable flavor. Or if you don't want the cubes, they now make like a big tub or can or jar, I guess, plastic jar of uh, powdered bouillon. You can mix two in one cup if you want to. And no, salt does not increase your blood pressure. In fact, eating this way, your blood pressure will decrease with your waistline. Mine has. I'm absolutely perfect blood pressure now. And I still have quite a ways to go on my waistline. But focus on the electrolytes and minerals so you can cut the cravings and the symptoms of the keto quote unquote flu. You may lose anywhere from 5 to 25 pounds of fluid the first couple of weeks once you get into ketosis. Not in your transition phase, but once you truly get into ketosis, most of the weight you lose at first is water weight. And that's because you're burning the sugar that the body is trying to store as fat. Okay, and you should eat the highest quality meat you can afford. That's fatty. <laughs> okay, I don't always do that. I do eat a lot of ribeye because that's one of the fattiest cuts you can get at the local grocery store. But I also eat a cheaper variety of pork, which is Spam is the commercial brand and what Aldi sells they call luncheon meat. It's a can of processed pork and it's about 18% fat so I like that. I also buy the 72% ground beef and if you watch Dr. Mabry's uh, casserole video that's what he uses. He uses a three pound chub and he and I have been emailing back and forth to where we can find it the cheapest. If I see it for sale I'll let him know. But he always reminds me you can get a 10 pound chub at Walmart for a dollar five a pound. That's a pretty reasonable way to do this. And don't, if you can't afford the higher quality keto carnivore, it all works just fine on lower quality. You just might be getting some other stuff that you don't need or want and maybe you want to get rid of it later. You can probably find 20 different varieties of hot dogs at the grocery store. So you want to make sure you get the ones that don't have natural flavoring, which can be anything in this country. It can even be sugar added to make it taste better. And all the food companies do add sugar to make things taste better. Okay, and don't forget about eggs. Eggs are a very good source of everything you need. Vitamins, collagen. Oh, there's the thunder. don't know if you heard it. You can also eat organ meat. Brains, tongue, liver, oxtail. You may or may not know how to cook those. You may or may not like them. I've heard if you ask the butcher to grind liver in with the uh, ground beef, you really can't tell you're eating it. I haven't been that brave yet, but I might be soon. Seafood and shellfish, that's all included under meat. You can have water, unsweet tea, or black coffee. Or you can have... You don't have to have black, black coffee. You can have it with uh, heavy whipping cream. Throw away the low-fat milk. Stop buying the 2%, the skim. Even the whole milk has too much sugar added to make it taste good. 
But if you need milk, use heavy whipping cream. It's even better in the fat category and the low carb category than half and half. If you can't find heavy whipping cream, cream and you must have some kind of a dairy, liquid dairy, then use half and half. It's better than any milk you can buy in the dairy case. You can, add, like I said, you can add sweeteners to your to your coffee if you want. It's best to kind of seek out local sources also if you can for eggs or or meat. I know after the Wufu bat flu came around, the local farmers are having a heck of a time getting into the butcher to get their cattle sold. Butchers are backed up for, till November was what I was told the last time I asked my local friend here who grows cows and then sells the meat. She can't get an appointment till November, so I can't buy any of her meat until then. And by the time she gets then, I'm probably so far down the list, it may be next year before I can get the locally grown meat. But if you're in a better area where the butchers aren't as backed up, then, uh, then get some local meat. You know, I remember growing up, my dad would used to buy like a side of a cow, half a cow or something. He'd split a cow with somebody else and our freezer was always full of beef. But that's the best way to get it. And I'm just going to touch on you can eat nose to tail. That includes all the organs. And it's supposed to be better for you. I haven't really gotten into that. But the main thing is don't fret if you slip up. This is a very forgiving way of eating. Yes, it'll spike your sugar if you have that piece of cake or dessert. But you also have to live life. If you slip up, yeah, your sugar will go up, your insulin will go up. But if you go back on to this way of eating at the next meal or the next morning, it'll all balance out and you'll be back on track. Okay. If you hit a, hit a roadblock, some people find it better to go dairy-free for a month, except for butter. And then uh, that's if your results aren't as expected. Some of the mistakes people make when they start carnivore are they forget that seafood, eggs, and butter are actually keto-friendly, carnivore-friendly. They go too lean. They stick with their what they've been hurt hearing for decades. Oh, eat chicken because it's leaner. And you know what the government guidelines did is they actually encouraged all the farmers to breed leaner cattle, leaner pigs, and leaner lambs for, for eating. And I guess chickens too, but they already had the hallmark of being lean. So I try not to eat chicken. It also has linoleic acid, which is one of the main problems with the seed oils. You get about 65% of your linoleic acid from seed oils, and you get 16% from chicken, which is too high for me. Don't forget about electrolytes. Uh, a lot of times people don't get enough omega-3 fatty acids. If you cut out the seed oils, you will get your omega-3s omega-6 ratio in a better ratio because seed oils are huge amount up to 80 percent omega-6s but you'll all you always need a little bit of omega-6s so I basically try to cut out fried food at restaurants because they all fry in seed oils but if you follow me on Facebook or Instagram that's also CP 59 fit you will see that I had a uh, seafood meal out the other night and it had like six of the Walt's famous shrimp at uh, Red Lobster but every, that was fried everything else was scampi so broiled I guess shrimp uh, lobster tail broiled and crab legs dipped in butter so I had just a wee little bit of fried because I do need a little bit of a omega-6s, but I want to cut out most of my fried food unless I'm cooking it in animal fat. And you're not going to find a restaurant these days that cooks in animal fat because the government says they shouldn't. Sorry about that. I shook the camera a little bit. I didn't realize this tray I had it on was so shaky. Okay, don't be afraid of organ meats and don't be afraid of collagen. You get collagen if you eat the whole 
the whole piece of meat. Gristle is collagen. The little film around the uh, yellow of eggs is collagen. Collagen is why people that eat carnivore and low carb have healthy looking skin and are much, uh, much more healthy in their skin. But you definitely want to avoid artificial or imitation seafood. It can have fillers in it that will knock you out of ketosis in a heartbeat. And that's the whole goal of this whole thing is to be in ketosis. That's why you lower the carbs. And like I said, 30, 60, 90 days. It doesn't mean you're not going to be able to eat a donut the rest of your life. You just got, if you're as heavy as I was, and most Americans are, you are metabolically, metabolically unfit. You have to get your metabolic system fit before those carbs won't affect you as badly. So yes, when your grandma has her 100th birthday, you can eat a piece of cake. Don't make her upset. You know, don't be the, the stooge in the room because you can start back on your way of eating the next day, but she's only going to have one 100th birthday. So there are, there are, there is room to cheat, but it shouldn't be every day. And one of the problems is sugar, in, sugar is more addictive than heroin. And heroin is about the most ad addictive drug that's illegal. So you can be off it for months and not have a craving because you're filling up with fat and you're eating to fullness at every meal and then you can have that piece of cake at grandma's and then you want another piece and then you stick around for the weekend and you want to help her finish the cake and you have just gotten your addiction started again you almost have to go to rehab so just start hard on your on your keto low carb diet or way of eating as soon as you can after that because the more you get sugars, wheats, those kind of things, um, the more you're going to want them. They are extremely addictive. Wheats turn into sugar, so they're almost as addictive as pure sugar. But uh, one thing you have to be very careful on, on, on this way of eating, is sauces, marinades, dry rubs, gravy, and condiments almost all have added sugar. That's why they taste good. So you have to almost cut out all those things. And a, another friend I wrote on my Facebook the other day when I put, posted a picture of all the sausage I'd gotten at, uh, at Aldi because it was on sale. I think I had four pounds of the ground breakfast sausage, three pounds of the link sausage, a pound of bacon, a uh, half a gallon or whatever, maybe a quart, I don't know. What, what it comes in of the heavy whipping cream. And a thing called cheese fries, which are not potato, they're slices of cheese that you deep fry. When I lived in Europe, in the Czech Republic, they called it schmozeny sear, fried cheese. And oh my gosh, it was wonderful. Uh, these remind me of that, but they, over there they put a little bread coating on it, so I'm gonna have to figure out a way to make it without the bread crumbs. But these are basically just Thick slices of cheese you drop in a deep fryer. And a friend said, well, goodness, what do you do? Just eat a hunk of sausage and call it good? You don't put anything with it? I, I answer back, no, you can put eggs, cheese, heavy whipping cream, uh, spices, salt, season all, sea salt, regular salt, hamburger seasoning, whatever you want. Or you can, like I said, watch Dr. Mabry's things where he puts hamburger, cheese, eggs, and he doesn't use any seasoning in it, but I generally season the hamburger a little bit. But definitely cut out most commercial sauces. If you make a sauce on your own, you don't want to use the flour to thicken it. My coach on Verda told me to get xanthan gum. I haven't been able to find it yet, but apparently that's spelt with an X. X-A-N-T-H-A-M, I think, but that's a natural thickener which you can use to make some gravies if you use the drippings from the, the healthy meat that you cook. Okay, and like I said, you can eat out, but you don't want to eat out thoughtlessly. You know, you want to maybe even lie to the waiter and say you're allergic to wheat, you're allergic to sugar, your, uh, there's three or four things you don't really want. Uh, see, uh, vegetable oils, 
you can't have anything cooked in vegetable oil. Or you can just tell them you're eating a special way and it will knock you out of ketosis. And they'll tell you, oh, well, yeah, we add this rub on the steak, and even though we call it just a steak, it has sugar added to it. And then ask for extra butter and melt it on the steak, and you'll be all right. But don't just go and say, oh, that looks good, that looks good. You know, you want to stick to your diet if you eat out, and you can eat out. I did the other night. I got coleslaw. I did eat some vegetables, even though I'm carnivore. But coleslaw is cabbage. The sauce, the mix, or whatever you call that stuff they put on it, the dressing, probably had some seed oil in it, probably had some sugar on it, but my ketones and my glucose had not elevated or hadn't changed much the next day, so I didn't overdo it. Okay. Okay, and you really don't, again, don't want to quit too soon. Give it at least six to eight weeks, so 30 to 60 days for awesome results. And don't let the symptoms, you know, if you get a little keto flu, Google that or YouTube it, search it. It's very easy to prevent. You might need a little bit of magnesium supplement, but don't get the kind that gives you diarrhea. I don't remember exactly what. There's like four different types of magnesium. And the magnesium and the salt will keep you from getting cramps at night because once you start flushing all the, all the uh, salt, sodium, you might get a little bit of leg cramps at night. But if you drink the bouillon and take a low dose of magnesium before you go to bed, most likely it'll help you sleep better and you won't get the cramps. Okay, remember there's no such thing as portion restricting don't do it. Don't portion restrict and get comfortably stuffed at each meal. And only eat when hungry. Eat when you're hungry. Eat until you're not hungry. That's how we always did it in the old, old, old days when we were hunter-gatherers. You eat when food's available. You don't eat when it's not. Okay. And you kind of want to watch out for processed meats unless that's all you can afford. I've kind of already gone over that. Do not restrict your salt intake. And don't overcook the meats. And you don't actually need most supplements. So this is getting long. It's definitely going to be a two-parter. But uh, let me just kind of do a quick recap on the high points. Which I just hit on most of them. Don't portion control. Don't calorie restrict. All you want to be restricting are the seed oils, vegetable oils, anything made with wheat, and all kinds of sugar. You want to aim for fatty foods, and you also want to add one to two ounces of quality fat to each meal. If you're eating vegetables, put butter, sour cream, cream cheese, olive oil, or coconut oil in with your vegetables. If you're eating meat, add butter to it. You can mix you know, soften some butter and add a little olive oil to it. That's wonderful on a steak or any kind of meat almost. But always add at least an ounce and then cook in those animal fats also. I told you I'd give you a snack. You don't want to go too high on the protein. In my last video, I talked about, you know, there's a moderate protein is what this low-carb, high-fat diet is about. And there is a number for each uh, height and sex. So like a six foot one man, man like me, I've been given 16 ounces of protein containing food that I should eat a day. So one 16 ounce steak would be my limit of protein. I usually snack on cheese cubes from Aldi. They come in little tiny squares or the Gouda. Uh, premium snacking sticks or something like that. And then I put them in a ranch dressing or I dip them in a ranch dressing. That's the fat that is made with canola oil. Soybean oil is one of the worst seed oils you can have. Canola oil, though technically a seed oil, has the least amount of omega-6s and polyunsaturated fatty acids of any of the seed oils. So Verda is okay with using canola oil. I try to use it very sparingly, but 
it's in the ranch dressing I like, and all the other ones in this area have soybean oil as the number one uh, ingredient. You can you can use mayonnaise, but same problem. Most mayonnaise as you buy commercially are made with soybean oil. So it's best to, if you're about my age and a man, 16 ounces of protein a day would basically break down to four ounces a meal if you're eating three meals. And what is one ounce of protein containing foods? It's one egg, one ounce of cheese, one ounce of nuts, or one ounce of beef, chicken, lamb, shrimp, whatever meat you're eating. So my typical breakfast the last few days has been two or three eggs. I have a friend that grows them, so I get farm fresh eggs there. A little bit healthier than the store-bought ones. I put about two ounces of that pork sausage. I've fried up a whole pound. And I, I put two ounces in with the three eggs. And I'm still using up my sliced cheese. So I'm using the Kraft American. Put two slices of that. But as I blend the eggs, I put about an ounce and a half of heavy, heavy whipping cream. Very high in calories, but also very high in fat, which is what I want. Okay, so three eggs, two ounces of sausage, one and a half ounce, ounce of heavy whipping cream, two slices of cheese, and then I've been adding three or four sausage links, which is one ounce, according to the package. So I got two ounces of ground sausage, that's two of my 16. One ounce of links, three eggs, let's see what I got, six, and technically I don't know that that sliced cheese is one ounce, but let's say it is. So that's, what's that, eight. That's half of my daily protein containing foods in one meal. It's about 1,100 calories. I don't, my fitness pal says I should be at about 2,500 calories a day. I rarely hit that because once I eat when I'm full and then I eat again when I'm hungry, I generally stay below two or 2,200, not even trying. And then I'll have about two ounces of cheese cubes for a snack about the time I get to work or into the shift. But you can do this. If you have any questions or comments, please put them below. Thank you for watching. I know it's long. It'll probably be about two 12 or 15 minute videos. But uh, if you've watched this long, please hit the subscribe button. Please hit the like button. You don't know how much that helps the YouTube, YouTube algorithms. And all I'm on here for is to get the word out. And if you hit those buttons, if you comment, YouTube will spread it far and wide. The way they promote videos is however much comments subscribing and liking occurs in basically the first three hours or at least the first 24 hours that's how they spread it out to more people that they think would like keto topics that helps build the base that helps support me even though I'm not making any money off of this yet I'm a long way long long way from making money so please uh, please do what you can but most of all take care of your health this channel is about health through the carnivore diet, but I'm also going to expand to other things like vacations, uh, massages, just relaxing, and having a great time for overall health. I can't tell you how much I appreciate you. And uh, it's getting late here, so I'm going to shut this down so I can get it loaded up. I'm hoping it'll come out tomorrow, which would be Thursday, at least part one, at about 3.30 Central Time. Have a great day. Bye-bye.